The FDA is building and implementing an active surveillance system using administrative and insurance claims data in order to monitor the various regulated products and devices from the FDA. And the product or device we're looking at today is cardiac resynchronization therapy defibrillators, pre- and post-market experience. And I want to introduce you to David G. Strauss, MD, PhD, medical officer for the Center for Devices and Radiological Health at the US FDA. This is a hot topic, as we say in this business. Uh, first off, what was the purpose of this analysis? Yeah, th thank you very much. The purpose of this analysis was to compare the patient characteristics from the trials that were performed before CRT-D devices came on the market in the 1999 to 2002 range to patients that received the devices after they were on the market, the pre versus post market. And what we did was look at all Medicare patients that received CRT-D devices from 2002 to 2008 and looked at their characteristics compared to specifically the companion and miracle ICD trials. So what did you find? Um, I'd say we found three principal findings. The first one was that there was a substantially lower rate of left bundle branch block in the Medicare patients compared to the pre-market trials. And this is important because left bundle branch block has been shown to be a critical predictor of which patients benefit from cardiac resynchronization therapy. The second major finding was that there was a substantially higher rate of atrial fibrillation and hypertension in the Medicare patients compared to the pre-market trial patients. And the third major finding was that while women comprise 57% of the Medicare population overall, they only received 26% of the CRTD devices. However, this rate was actually similar to the pre-market trial rates of the percentage of women receiving devices. Dr. Strauss, how important are such analyses? Well, I, I think what the post-market uh, analysis l allows us to do is to see how devices are actually being used in the real world. So with this study, we specifically were just comparing patient characteristics. Um, in a separate study our group did that was also presented this morning, we looked at long-term follow-up of these Medicare patients. And because we have such a large number of patients, there were 145,000 patients with new CRT implants, we were able to dive down into subgroups of patients. Uh, we looked specifically at women versus men with and without left bundle branch block. And when you start diving down into subgroups in the pre-market trials, then uh, the analyses are underpowered to find uh, significant or meaningful differences. But in this post-market setting, we can look at uh, smaller groups and find out what the real safety and efficacy of the devices are in those groups. In terms of the take-home message you think from the presentations today, what's the clinical lesson you'd like to get across? Well, uh, I think that one of the main messages we found was that the percentage of patients receiving uh, CRTD devices that had left bundle branch block was significantly lower in the post-market setting. And in our outcome study analysis, we looked at the effect of left bundle branch block separately in women and men, partially because women have been underrepresented in the pre-market trials. Oh, yeah. And what was really interesting was that left bundle branch block uh, was associated with a much better survival rate in women than in men. And uh, we discussed uh, reasons why this might be true, and we think that uh, men actually more commonly have a false positive diagnosis of left bundle branch block than women. But the main take-home message is I think it's very important to diagnose left bundle branch block, and um, it is uh, to think about it as a critical predictor of which patients will benefit from cardiac resynchronization therapy. Finally, at the end of sessions, they oftentimes ask if there are any questions in the audience. Were there any interesting questions asked of you today? Yeah, one question was, what does this Medicare database give us compared to some of the other databases for ICDs and CRT devices? And specifically, there's a uh, national ICD registry. Um, one of the things that this Medicare database gives us is near real-time uh, follow-up results. and we did not do near real-time analysis for, for this study. We looked at patients from 2002 to 2008. But this was a, a pilot analysis. And in the future, 
the Medicare claims, uh, prior research has shown, are almost all submitted within eight weeks. And so going forward, it could be possible to do near real-time analysis and surveillance of devices using this Medicare claims data that wouldn't be available with some of the other registries. Thank you, Dr. Strauss. I appreciate your time a lot. And for those of you who would like some more information, please go to CardioSource World News, either what's in your mailbox or online. And uh, I'm Rick McGuire, Executive Editor for CSWN.